Hey guys, it's Dr. Leslie again. I'm um, just kind of continuing the series um, of the osteology and, and some references to the muscles for uh, a lot of the health science classes I teach, uh, whether it's anatomy, kinesiology, uh, myo osteology. All right, this one may be, again, I, I always preface my videos by telling you that you should be using this only as a supplement to your PowerPoint notes as well as handouts for the practical. I may not be 100% thorough. Um, again, you've heard this before. I try not to be too robotic, so I'm trying not to follow um, a list, just kind of going based on my years of doing this. Okay, so this video, I, I, I played around with it a few times before you're watching this version. Uh, again, I don't, I'm doing this solo, so sometimes um, the cinematography, if I could say that, isn't perfect. So, so you may see me moving things around a little bit during this video. Now, what we're looking at here is we got the left ankle again. All right, we kind of, this, my friend here, we did the left hip, the left knee, and now we're just continuing down the left ankle. So what we're looking at here is the distal tibia, the distal fibula. All right, remember, we have the diaphysis, which is the length of the whole long bone. We have the... Um, metaphysis, which is the hyaline metabolic area, especially in adolescence, and then we have the epiphysis at the very end. This is going to be the medial side of the ankle, and this is going to be the lateral side of the ankle. All right. Two main things you should first see is the distal end of the fibula. We call it the lateral malleolus. You press on the lateral side of your ankle, in 99% of you, it's going to be very prominent. You're going to feel on the medial side is going to be the medial malleolus, which is the distal end of the tibia bone. Um, might as well mention it now. On the medial side, you're going to have the very strong, dense um, deltoid ligament on the medial side. We talk about it in class, in pretty much all my classes that I, I talk about the ankle, that we can have an E version, okay, that's with an E, ankle sprain, which is not as common, that can damage that deltoid ligament that would be running here. Again, delt ligaments run bone to bone. When they get damaged, we call them sprains. On the lateral side, we have anterior talofibular, calcaneal fibular, and posterior talofibular. Um, now, remember the talus, which kind of leads me to the next thing. The talus is this first bone underneath between the tibia and the fibula. So anterior talo, talus, okay, talo, fibular is right about right here. Calcaneal fibular, the calcaneus bone is going to be your heel bone. If I turn this, okay, you can see the calcaneus here. So you're going to have the calcaneal fibular, and then you're going to have the posterior talo fibular. If I kind of continue to rotate this, and not too bad, um, there's your talus, and then there's your Fibula. Okay, so you're going to have three ligaments that are be on the lateral side. Com now, there's more than three ligaments on the lateral side, but those are the main three that get damaged with inversion ankle sprains. Now, remember, with inversion ankle sprains, we can also damage some of the muscles and tendons, which I'll get to on the lateral side as well as the medial side. But let's review the bones first. Okay, so I talked about the talus right here. Now the talus, think of it like a wedge between, like if you had, remember we, I think I cover this in class, that if you had a piece of firewood and you're trying to split it, we use those kind of things that we kind of hammer with a mallet into and eventually the wood splits. Well, if you land and slam your leg down, that talus okay, will, can kind of push between the tibia and fibula, call it like a high ankle sprain, because there are other ligaments in this area, and separate near where this interosseous membrane is running between the tibia and the fibula and the distal aspect of the leg. So that's the talus right here. Now between the talus and the distal tibia fibula, what action do we say occurs there? Mainly dorsiflexion. Now our ankle is not going to move that much because it's plastic and there's all these rivet, rivets, but we're going to have dorsiflexion occurring at this joint. If I turn us on the side, you can see the talus again pretty much from the um, front to the back. Then we've got the calcaneus, okay, which is going to be your quote-unquote heel bone. Between the talus and the calcaneus is a joint we call the sub 
Taylor joint. So that's going to have inversion and eversion. So remember, inversion's kind of bringing the heels towards the midline. We're on the lateral side here where my pen is. This is the medial side, okay, where my pen is now. So if we stress this area where the ligaments are there, that's going to be inversion. If I kind of pull the other way like I'm trying to right now, that would be eversion. Okay, while we're on the calcaneus, we might as well turn us down the posterior side just a little bit. We're going to have areas for some of the small foot intrinsic muscles to the bottom of the foot. And we've got areas where they protrude out. This is an area where, you know, you've heard of heel spurs, okay? Sometimes there's tractioning going on with the fascia and the muscles, which think of stalactites or stalagmites in a cave can kind of pull and form a, you know, with remodeling a bone, you can get a spur there. And remember, that can press into the soft tissue of the foot and make you more susceptible to a plantar fasciitis um, condition. Now, we can have plantar fasciitis without heel spurs. Sometimes we can have it. But remember in class, I talk about, you know, instead of taking 100 pounds of pressure through the palm of your hand, but now I put 100 pounds of pressure, say, through the tip of this pen, there's going to be a lot of force going through the tissue. So that's where it can inflame the tissue a lot. All right. So here again, this is the calcaneus. And then while you're looking at it, this is the distal or the lateral malleolus of the fibula. While we have your lower leg here in this position, or our lower leg. Remember your superficial compartment, your peroneus longus, brevis, and tertius, okay, are gonna come around near the lateral malleolus. Now, tertius is gonna be on the anterior side going down to the base of the fifth metatarsal. Getting slightly ahead of myself in this video, but we'll review that this is the metatarsal, this is the base, but, we, but we're gonna have peroneus longus and brevis coming from this distal end of the Fibula, okay, and also the longest is going to be higher up, closer to the, um, the proximal end of the fibula. It's going to come down. They're going to wrap around the lateral malleolus. The longest is going to go underneath the foot to the dorsum of the foot. Plantar, excuse me, the plantar aspect of the foot. Okay, plantar aspect's the bottom. Dorsum is going to be the top. And then the brevis is going to go to the base of the fifth. And again, this is a very common fracture site. Um, it could be basketball players, dancers, they can kind of cause an avulsion fracture pulling a piece of bone off there. And I saw that a lot in my career, especially early on. Okay. Um, what we want to do now, let me just go to the medial side of the ankle. So what we have here is we have the calcaneus again. Here's our talus. All right. Um, Coming down, we're going to review these muscles in the posterior compartment, but um, they're going to come down the Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum, flexor hallucis, longus. We're going to wrap around the medial malleolus. There's an area called the sustum taculum talli. You don't really need to know this for our class, but there's a groove there. It's going to come down and most of these muscles are going to go to the dors the plantar. I said that again, the plantar aspect of the foot. Now, because muscles go to the plantar aspect of the foot, what do I always tell you in class? They are going to assist in plantar flexion. You can see it here. If they attach here and they're going to pull down, what's going to happen? They're going to cause plantar flexion as well as possibly toe flexion, okay, which is bringing the toes like you're curling them, okay? So if I brought this part of the foot, let me just kind of bring me centered here a little bit down this direction would be flexion of the, of the toes, okay? If they kind of came this direction. If muscles attach to the top of the foot, okay, extensor digitorum, extensor uh, halysis, okay? They're going to cause extension of the toes, okay, coming up and maybe dorsiflexion. Again, purpose of this video is not gonna cover every single muscle origin insertion, but you can get a better idea. If we're still on the medial side, of the leg. One of the first bones we're going to have here is the navicular. And while I'm here, we're going to have the first cuneiform or the medial cuneiform. Now, I'm going to turn the foot around here and look at the top again. Okay. So here's our navicular again. And here's our first cuneiform. 
So again, there's the medial cuneiform, the intermediate cuneiform, and the lateral cuneiform. Okay. So let me just zoom in a tiny bit, try to get us centered here for your viewing pleasure. The next bone is going to be the cuboid bone. Okay. And there's going to be more lateral. So this is towards the outside part of your foot. All right, so if you're, if you're pressing at home while you're watching this and you press on the outside of your foot, you're, so your cuboid's more lateral, your navicular is more medial. Now, worth mentioning is all these bones, talus, calcaneus, cuneiforms, navicular, cuboid, are all tarsal bones. If you remember, if you haven't watched the um, hand and wrist videos, what do we call them? We call them carpals in the hand and wrist. These are going to be called tarsals. So, of course, we're going to have mid-tarsal joints, okay, and joints between all these bones, and there's going to be a lot of ligaments, okay? I highlighted a few around the ankle, which we talk about a lot, but there's ligaments like the spring ligament, the, uh, and then some other smaller ligaments that run between all these bones. So they can get sprained, but again, it goes beyond um, what we're going to be covering in, in this video in our, our class in general, okay? We will cover, highlight some of them. Um, just not every single one of them. As we go lower, all right, we're going to have uh, metatarsals, okay? What did we have in the hand? We had metacarpals. These are going to be metatarsals. We number them the same way. This is medial. This is lateral. This is towards the midline. This is towards the outside. So what do we have on the inside? We have our big toe side, right? So what do we set in the hand? The, the thumb side was number one, right? So same thing. Here's the toe. I'm just trying to get us a nice picture with my crazy toes here, but here's the first metatarsal, second metatarsal, third metatarsal, fourth, fifth. Like in the hands, in the, in the metacarpals, the metatarsals, we have a, also a base shaft head, base shaft head all the way to the fifth. And before we had said um, the base of the fifth metatarsal, that's very easy to palpate on your foot. If you either start near your toes on the outside of your foot, the lateral side, and work your way back, you may fall off this little um, ledge of bone. Or if you start back by your heel, you move forward, you may butt up against it. So a very important landmark um, that you're doing. If you're doing different types of manual therapies, you may want to locate that and see um, you know, if there's any tenderness there. All right, so, so we, we have our uh, tarsal metatarsal joints. Okay, we had our mid tarsal joints, tarsal metatarsal joints. Coming down here, the easy part about the toes, the distal toes, is just like the hand. So, what are we going to have? We're going to have two phalanges on the big toe. We are going to, I'm not going to turn it over. We do have sesamoids on the bottom part of your toe, your first toe. Sometimes we'll call it this region here, the first ray. Okay, which we won't go into that, but that's on the first side. So you have your proximal phalange, distal phalange, proximal middle distal phalange. So remember, there's three phalanges from your second through your fifth. Okay, so again, on pictures, if you see muscles running to one of these quote unquote toes, and you see that it's not on one with two, it's it's on the it's not something that has to probably do with halysis, right? Halysis was the fancy term for the thumb. Halysis is going to be the fancy um, uh, explanation for the big toe, all right, or first toe. And again, muscles on the top of the foot are typically going to be dorsiflexors. So if you memorize your insertion, like you're going to have tibialis anterior of the first metatarsal uh, and near the cuneiform, all right, so you're going to know that it's going to be a dorsiflector. If it goes down to the toes on the dorsum side, which is this side, they're gonna extend the toes, but they're also gonna dorsiflect. And like I said before, on the plantar aspect, the bottom. All right, so this area between the to toes, you'll get muscles like the interossei or the lumbricals, okay? And the bottom side, you're gonna have some of the, the um, plantar muscles and these small intrinsic muscles that form help form the arches in the feet. Um, also in the toes, remember, you're going to have dips and pips also. Distal interphalangeal joint between the middle 
and the distal phalange, and you're gonna have the proximal to phalangeal joint between the proximal phalange and the middle phalange. You're also gonna have metatarsal phalangeal joints between the metatarsals, we call them MTP joints, between the metatarsals and the first phalange. Similar to what we had in the hand, we had, we, what did we call them? We called them MCPs, right? Metacarpal phalangeal joints. All right, but now we have metatarsals. Okay, guys, um, this video is a little bit longer than the others. I, I covered some other things outside of just strictly the osteology. Um, hopefully, you, you find these helpful and maybe a little bit of a diversion from uh, the regular note studying. But again, study the notes, study the handouts, and again, if they're not, this videos, these videos are not covering 100% of this stuff, please cross-reference your information. Okay, guys, have a great day.